So I basically got the shark anchor without any difficulty and as a person who now owns one, I can confirm that getting the materials is harder than defeating any other monster in the 7 seas. So you click on this video with the purpose of finding out how to get this OP sword quickly in order to PvP, let's get into this. Subscribe first by the way. The most unique thing of this sword is that the obtainment requires players to collect needed materials, then crafting it into one item that soon attracts an NPC, which you have to defeat to get a 100% chance of getting it. Only the player whose monster magnet is consumed by the shark, with the condition of having to have dealt more than 10% of the shark's HP, will be guaranteed to get it. So it is clear that the limiting factor of this process is somehow getting all the materials to buy not only the magnet, but also the first two items I'll be covering on how to defeat them all effectively without you dying. Before that, because you're in the sea, I suggest you to not go past danger level 5 to prevent too many encounters. So in total, to buy the two items and the magnet, you'll need 20 shark teeth, 30 fools gold, 3 mutant teeth, 8 electric wings, and 3 terror eyes. Shark teeth are gotten from the normal ship HP sucking sharks that spawn almost often. These people come in groups of 2 onto 3 and you cannot stack up sharks since they automatically die if you sail away. AOV and Buddha M1s are very effective in defeating these and since they do not pose a big threat, I think that it'll be pretty easy. The teeth can be used to craft the two items required to unlock the magnet. The mutant tooth is gotten from the terror shark and it is a guaranteed drop. Since I do not want to get you confused with the terror shark, there will be a brief explanation on what to be aware of from it on the terror eyes part of the video. Most gold can be gotten from the two types of ship raids and chests. Do not ever hope getting these from chests since the chances are too small. The normal ship consists of two small ships and one big brigade. They will constantly chase and shoot your ship until it dies. Once the ship dies, the raid disappears. One thing to take note of, according to the wiki, only the big one gives the gold without any notification appearing for no reason, which means that prioritizing on the big one is preferable, but not effective since the small ones are still on the loose. It's not bad though, but waiting for the two small ships to clump up and destroying them afterward with AoE is in my opinion less time consuming, but I'll leave you to choose. The haunted ship raid, however, is filled with two brigades, with each ship giving the gold but at the cost of 6 fishmen spawning as well. With more NPCs getting involved, the best solution to defeat a gang fight alone is to not be alone in the first place. Call your friends to assist you in handling sea events like this. One player drives the ship while dodging everything, as the rest cripple the ship so that you can give the finishing blow. But if you're alone, then it's best to try to defeat the small ones first. Even if your ship dies, you can always go back. Or just ignore this event entirely. Electric wings were a pain in every single part of the body. They're gotten from these flying electric fish and not only do they group up, they deal a lot of damage. Flying up with your fruit ain't the best thing right here. Yama's X skill actually helped me group them up making them easier to be hit. So basically, clump them up and spam AOE moves. It is also recommended to somehow get to the air, since the ship just blocks your moves, making it harder for you. Keep in mind that it's not guaranteed to get the wings even if an entire horde is dead. So gotta make sure that your luck is good. The tear eyes weren't really that hard compared to the others if you're using Phoenix. Just fly up, make sure that the particles are aligned with the shock. Also make sure not to be in rough sea since the lightning strikes you out of the form. The eyes are pretty rare, but as long as you keep on defeating terror sharks, it is fine. The terror shark may also come in along with small sharks, so you will probably need to sacrifice your ship in order to get this, but this may also happen in other sea events. The replacements for Phoenix that I can think of are Magma, Ice, Mammoth, and Buddha. Also, if you want to fly up, make sure to actually fly high up. Since the terror shark can suck you down with one of its abilities. The line that I'm about to say is truly hard to accept by many, but all I gotta say, to get the materials, you just gotta keep on sailing. It is entirely dependent on RNG, and you have nothing to do to be against it. Alright, so we've gotten the monster magnet. All we gotta do now is not mess up, since dying will make your 90 hour grind a waste. If you guys are worried, always bring friends you can trust and make sure to get good internet so that you don't randomly get disconnected. Additional tip here, if you want to go alone and there are people at the dock, just go from the dock of the front gate of the island. So right now, we are sailing to find a terror shark that has 195k HP. And I know, the only places to get a shark like that are of course danger level 5 and 6, because the more dangerous the level is, the more aggressive the terror sharks are. And it has to be 195k HP. Maybe sometimes we gotta go further from our comfort zone. While sailing, ignore every sea event. Keep on sailing until the system message says this. This shark has the same attributes as a normal terror shark, which if you've gotten used to defeating terror sharks, this will be no ease. Well, in the blink of an eye, you got it. If you got more tips than this video, then go comment it down below. Thank you for watching and have a nice day.